Oh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 200 and Google it of the Speared Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and uh, I truly am working from home. In true working from home spirit, I'm looking fashionable on top and I'm wearing pyjamas uh, underneath and, and fucking slides. So it is currently slide season at the moment. Never thought I would say it, but uh, I uh, have been working hard. It's, we're coming up to Christmas. I've, I've just, I'm in fuck it mode. Who cares, you know? I'm, I might even crop myself out, the bottom half. Who cares, all right? Uh, stand-up comedy is back. I am stoked about it. I'm going to talk about that later. But first, um, obviously, we'll address the reason why I missed an episode last week, got to do with all the fucking hospital sleep study bullshit. We'll get into that later, okay? That's much – whether or not I'm going to survive 2021 is much less important than this very special announcement. I have to say – a big welcome to the winning team, to Elliot Page. Welcome aboard, mate. Welcome, Elliot Page. Boys, 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 boys. Ooh, 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 ooh. Welcome, Elliot Page, mate. It's great to have you on board. You know, you obviously, you know, you're on the other team and, and, and you just don't feel quite at home and that's fine. I support your uh, ch- choice. It's not, you can't say that, can you? You can't say it's very hard to support someone transitioning without making it sound like it's a choice. What are you supposed to say? Because if you say I support your choice, then it, you're kind of being like, oh, yeah, you decided to give being a bloke a go, and if you don't like it, maybe you'll go back. It, it's it's up to your whims. It's not a – It's from my understanding, it's not a choice, right? But then, like, I see a lot of people going, oh, man, I totally respect your decision. But that's just a synonym for choice. And then that, and choice is just a synonym for uh, just don't be gay. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's where that fucking realm of shit comes from. So I'm not going to say choice. I'm not going to say decision. I I support you, Elliot, mate, in... in uh, in, but you were never, you were never the other person. I've learned that ever since my Caitlyn Jenner joke. You can't dead name. I've been educated. I'm on the right side of history until I get cancelled for not being on the right, even more right side of history. Uh, so I'm not allowed to say the previous name, Elliot. Whatever it was, I can't remember it. Okay, uh, all your films forgotten. Who cares? Uh, if you've ever won Best Actress. How does that work? Like, do you do you keep the award or should we scratch out that extra S, those few S's, you know, change it back to actor? You know, it's it's kind of spelled wrong. It doesn't have an O and it's got an E, but it's close enough. You know, is that is that what we should do? I'm open to suggestions. And again, don't be a fucking idiot and assume that I am trashing the idea of transitioning. I love it. I think we need more men. I reckon we need I reckon the world would be better if we were all blokes, you know? If if it was just big blokes and weak blokes, I reckon that'd be the best world ever, you know? You got your big blokes, we do the heavy lifting. You got your little blokes, they do the 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 whatever else they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever we duck can't be fucked doing, right? You big blokes and you little blokes. So if there are, you know what? That's what I reckon we should. That's how I really think we should all be equal. If we're all one gender, you know, if there's just big blokes and little blokes. So I'm gonna have to, with that in mind, I'm gonna have to restart the podcast. <clears throat> Ladies, oh no, wait. Uh, uh, little blokes and big blokes. Uh. Small dudes and massive dudes, welcome to episode 200 and Google it of the Speared Sunnies podcast. Welcome Elliot Page to the winning gender. Congratulations, mate. You know, I was actually, um, speaking of Elliot, I was hanging out with Elliot Page the other day and boy, oh boy, has he embraced the fucking lifestyle. You know what I mean? Like I saw the movies, he's, he's only five foot one, so he's a bit of a manlet, you know, I mean... At this point, uh, Elliot's hairline is running away faster from him than, you know, future roles. <laughs> so I, I was I was worried that maybe Elliot wouldn't be, like, up to up to partying on the level of, of the boys do because obviously he's joining the club and we, we love to have him in there, but can he keep up? Bro, Elliot Page came over to my house the other night. We had a fucking rager, okay? We got on the cruises, okay, because toxic mas- masculinity is done. We'll drink the bitch drinks, okay? You can keep your fucking 
Keep your fucking scotch and your your fucking vodka and all your fucking manly drinks. We'll smash the bitch drinks. It's got more alcohol. It tastes better. Me and Elliot, we were smashing back the cruisers, chugging them. Elliot had eight cruisers, right? And then he got so fucking hyped up. We were watching the game, of course, with the boys because we're all fucking men. We're blokes. We're, we're, you know, watching the game, eating chips. Elliot fucking smashes eight cruisers, you know. He's doing the fucking whirlwind thing, sucking them down. I, I was losing my mind. He was so loose. And then all of a sudden, Elliot gets real hyped up. Fucking, they, they score a goal on the telly. Elliot loses his mind. He's a bit drunk. He fucking runs headfirst through my drywall. He ends up with a concussion, ends up in hospital. Fucking hectic, man. So he truly has embraced uh, the lifestyle of the boys. Uh, so that's that's great. You know, I think he fucked three chicks as well. At the same time, with a concussion, it was incredible. I've never seen such masculinity, and I'm happy to have Elliot on the team. That is incredible. That's uh, I mean, that's going to really even up our roster. Uh, that makes us that makes us look good in many categories. All right, we're, we're represented again in in Netflix. It's finally good to have like a real strong alpha male uh, in in a lead role on a Netflix film TV show. Okay, that uh, that's really good to have. Uh, it's it's also great to have uh, you know a really short, tiny, minuscule male lead actor. It proves that you know just because you're not five seven, which is tall for an actor, doesn't mean you can't be you know Tom Cruise. I mean you can't be Tom Cruise because that comes fucking insane. He's got a he's got his front tooth too far to the left, and it looks really strange when you see him smile and you kind of notice that the that the the his teeth don't line up. It's like someone fucking put his teeth in. And then before they were set, he like twisted his head and his teeth stayed in the same spot, but his head moved. So his front teeth are now kind of like his uh, left-ish teeth. And I'm not one to, you know, talk with my teeth, but at least they're fucking in the middle. You know, they're, they're in they're, they're not exactly straight, but they're where they should. They are where they should be, you know. I wonder with Tom Cruise's teeth with that, do you reckon on the right side or the left side, whichever one is has less teeth. Do you reckon like right at the back because his two front teeth are to the left or to the right? I think it's to the left. Do you reckon on the right side there's like just a like it's like as if he has missing teeth right at the back, you know, a real squishy spot. He could keep snacks in there, you know? Like a grape. He could just chuck a grape in there and then fucking 3 days later he gets a bit hungry, bam, he's having wine. <laughs> <laughs> So welcome, Elliot Page, to the boys. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, real good choice, uh, real good decision, sorry, real good becoming who you are. Uh, it's, I, to reiterate, guys, it's not a choice. I don't give a fuck, to be honest. Uh, and, and to the level I don't give a fuck, I will just make jokes about the dude. All right, I think that's, uh, I think that's, you know, what I really like seeing on TikTok? This is how we really know we have equality. Elliot Page goes, hey, I'm a bloke, and immediately we welcome him in. And we do that by fucking roasting the cunt. Not for being trans, not for being like, oh, you're a fucking woman. Oh, you're still Ellen Page. We Nobody did that. Everyone was like, ah, oh, welcome to the boys, mate, you fucking manlet. You're short. You're going bald. And, and like, that's really a quality because if you want to be a bloke, that's what we get, you know? It's like it's it's welcoming through bullying and uh, and welcome to the team, Elliot. You know, can't wait to look you in the eyes and shake. I mean, well, I won't be looking you in the eyes because you're so far down, but I will shake your hand after COVID. <laughs> um, I the funniest thing about Elliot Page is there's there's two ways of going about the fucking accepting a trans person. One, which I think is the correct way, is treating them absolutely no different from how you would normally treat that gender, you know, which is what I widely saw. I saw a few, like, fucking old boomers going, oh, we've lost another one, and oh, he's still a bloody woman, all that kind of stuff. But the the people that I saw from, like, my age and younger was generally welcome, Elliot, and then bullying Elliot, not for being trans, just for all of the traits that you would get bullied for generally if you were a boy, right? And that's how it happens. I know for a lot of you, for a lot of you small blokes out there, that's not how you guys interact. You guys are, we are mean to our friends. You guys are nice to cunts you hate, all right? And that's really the difference between men and women. We are mean to those we love. You love those you hate. It's strange. You know, I, I think that both systems ultimately aren't 
are, are fucking stupid, you know? Like, if I like my mates, I should be nice to them. If you don't like someone, you shouldn't be nice to them. But for whatever reason, I'm mean to my mates and you're nice to cunts you don't like. I, I, I don't get it. I'm sure you don't really get it. But it's how the world fucking spins, okay? And I think that it, it, treating someone how you would normally treat someone from their gender is the ultimate form of equality. No fucking cushioning, no padding, just, yep, righto, I don't give a fuck either way, let's go play sport, okay? You're in the men's division, you're five foot one, sit on the bench, but you can you can be on the team. You know, like that is the vibe. I'm only uh, I'm, I'm only really treating you differently because uh, athletically you wouldn't be anywhere near as good as someone who is six foot. That's why you're on the bench. Not because you can't, just because of your spinal length generally, okay? So that's, you know, basically how it works. What I saw, that I think that's the right way to do it. You treat someone like they're not special, basically. Yeah, whatever, cool. You're Elliot. I don't care. Moving on. The other way to do it, which I think is is probably well-intentioned most of the time, but not just, uh, I don't think, helps at all, right? Which is just being like, oh, my God. Oh, well, you, you need extra help. We're going to cuddle you. We're going to wrap you in bubble paper, bubble, bubble wrap. Stay away. Stay away. Don't hurt feelings. Never, never fucking, I'll protect you. I will assume your needs and act accordingly without asking you. That kind of fucking treating someone like a toddler who can't speak even though they're an adult with wants, needs, desires. You just assume them. You just put them in a fucking box. You're a trend put him in a box and then fucking do that, right? I think that is uh, just coddling and stupid. Uh, and what I saw from the Elliot Page shit was, um, sorry, I'm a little bit sniffy. I was in Wuhan the other day. Um, what, what I saw from the Elliot Page shit was uh, he's like uh, in a Netflix show currently, right, playing a chick. Uh, and I haven't watched the show, but... I've seen it on Twitter, so I'm going to uh, assume that I know everything about it and I am the expert, and if you think I'm wrong, you're wrong. Uh, that's how the internet works. So thank you, fuck you, goodbye. Um, playing a woman, right? And so everyone, Elliot comes out, oh, I'm Elliot, I am a bloke, I love to fuck chicks, no worries, right? And, you know, Elliot's doing that, smashing cruisers, running headfirst through the drywall, just being a fucking bloke, you know? Um, and... Uh, all of these people start going, "Oh, you're you're a you're a man now. You're trans," and they start like tweeting at Netflix, asking them to change the gender of the female character that uh, Elliot is playing, or if they can't do that for the sake of the series, replace Elliot with someone female. Which can I just say? That is not supporting trans people. Someone coming out of tr out as trans and then you going to their fucking employer and going, hey, this person's come out of trans, so could you please, during a pandemic, fire them for what I assume will be to spare their feelings? I haven't asked them about it. I, I, in fact, I don't know who this cunt is, but I assume that he would prefer to be jobless than to act, which is his passion in life that he's been doing his entire life while dealing with gender dysphoria. So what I would like to do is to make sure that this guy loses his job to spare what I imagine is his feelings because I, I assume as a trans person they are incredibly fragile and I must protect them despite us being complete strangers and me not asking nor caring about their fucking needs. Please fire this man to make me feel better and for and to what I assume to be uh, them feeling better also, right? That is not how you fucking help people. Also, uh, change the gender of the character just because the actor is trans? I'm sorry, are you trying to ruin yet another fucking Netflix series by ham-fisting some fucking progressive thing into it? It's like, oh, they're in high school, but everyone's gay. Okay, stop. Stop it, all right, Netflix? Have one gay cunt every series. We don't need seven. It's unrealistic, right? I'm all for it, but we don't need seven. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> I just think that how fucking angry would you be if you really loved this TV series uh, and then someone comes out as trans and then the main character goes, oh, 
Yeah, I know that I've never acted like this because obviously the script writers wrote the entire script before hiring the main character, but uh, I want to get rid of my titties now. So we have to do that for a whole episode and then we'll get back to beating the bad guy. Like, what do you, how do you, how do you expect the, imagine being the fucking writer. What is it? Umbrella Academy? I don't know what the fuck it is. Imagine being the writer of that TV series and, and, and all of a sudden you get this fucking note down from the higher ups go, yeah, look, about 17,000 fucking uh, K-pop stan accounts want us to change the gender of an integral character, even though we've already filmed like 20 episodes in advance and all of those scripts are written and you've all been paid for it. What I really really need you to do is to just make this cunt a bloke. Go. And and also make it good. Go. Impossible fucking job. Elliot, I'm sure, doesn't want that shit either. I mean, if you really think about it, if you really think about it, do you really think that Elliot Page has a problem with pretending to be a woman? No. Quite clearly, literally, she's... He... (laughs) He has been... Fuck... Damn, I went so well. I got 16 minutes into it without fucking misgendering the cunt, and I just fucked it then. He, right, do you really think that Elliot Page has an issue with pretending to be a woman in a fucking Netflix series? Obviously not, because he's been pretending to be one for his entire fucking life. You're not protecting him. Getting a man fired doesn't help. Surprise, surprise. I'm sure if the dude wanted to lose his job, he would go, hey, I'm trans, being a woman makes me feel uncomfortable because I've done that for my whole life, so uh, either change the character or I'm out. And then they'll go, obviously, we can't change the character, and he'll go, great, I'm out. And, that, and like, you don't need to do that for him. That's the weirdest shit, like making decisions for other people based on the box that you put them in that is only related to sex, race, uh, and other fucking bullshit things that play in a, that have a role and do affect your life, but really don't dictate who you are on the inside. It plays an effect. I'm Australian. Obviously, I'm gonna, there's going to be things about me that are very different to someone who's a fucking Hispanic woman, but for fuck's sake, we are individuals to an extent. <laughs> Actually, I would say we are our uh, demographics to an extent. Actually, you know what? I don't give a fuck about any of this shit. Why am I yelling for 16 minutes, 17 and a half minutes about Elliot Page? I do think, though, the idea of Elliot Page being a fucking boy's boy, a man's man, and just partying it up with the boys and just fucking chicks and, like, doing dumb shit, like running through drywall, that imagery is so funny to me. I can't stop fucking thinking about it. I keep tweeting like ridiculous situations that I can invent Elliot Page being in, like like he's a fucking 17-year-old boy from Australia that that just discovered booze, you know, just found out about Goon and just starts doing dumb shit. I love the idea of that. How old is Elliot Page? Like what stage of a man's life has Elliot stepped into? Elliot Page. Age. 33. Okay, look, still young, you know, still pretty young. Um, It's going to be weird looking back at fucking Juno now, isn't it? Gee, that bloke's got a big belly. (laughs) Fucking hell. Um, Yeah, okay, so 33, thinking about home ownership. It's time to, like, You don't need to find a wife, but it is time to start thinking about it because you're coming up on, look, kids need to start happening now. Obviously, uh, I I assume biologically is out of the question unless you find a trans woman or trans man. I don't know how the fuck it works. So whatever, you're going to have to find a partner. It's time to settle down, Elliot. you got to get off the cruises. Stop running through drywall. You know, you can wear a hat. There's fucking Rogaine. We can sort that shit out. <laughs> oh, fuck. All right, that's enough before I get myself cancelled. Shout out to Elliot. Good on him. Um, boys, 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 good to have another person on the winning fucking team. Now, uh, I uh, uh, we'll, talk, we'll talk about the, uh, the sleep study... Uh, in a second and why I missed an episode and hospitals and that kind of bullshit because it's it's not as exciting as you might think. Um, But uh, look, dude, stand-up comedy is back. I 
finally, after Luke put it up on his fucking Instagram how many days, I didn't even realise how long it had been. I thought it had been like four months, 3, 6, 9, 12, 120 days. Luke put it up on his Instagram. For him, I think for me it might be a, it must be the same because we kind of stopped, we obviously stopped at the same time. 250 days almost of not performing stand-up. Holy fuck, that's insane. Um, but, uh, man, uh, on uh, Tuesday night, finally got to walk the boards again. Got uh, I got booked at the Comics Lounge for, I think, it was their first or second week back and uh, just did the new material night. Husey was there. Luke Kidgel was there. Limo performed. Uh, Bart performed as well. Um, and uh, it was it was fucking Awesome. Adam Rosenbach is who I was forgetting, and there's a few other people. They've slipped my mind. Sorry. Fuck, it was so good. I don't think I realized how much I missed stand-up, dude. I don't think I realized how much I missed performing. Because you know when you like – it's like if you break up with someone, right, and they don't die, you know, Uh and it's maybe it's not a messy breakup, but you just didn't work out. So you just break up and it's mutual and whatever. Of course you miss that person and seeing that person would make it that much worse. That's why high school breakups are the worst. You see them the fucking next day. I imagine the same is true if you break up somewhat with somebody you work with, right? Same shit. You know, you break up with someone and if the option to be with them is there, that makes it so much harder to get over them. Uh, whereas... You know, if you move states, it's a lot easier because that option is literally not there. There is no option like that. So your brain doesn't ever go, what if, which makes you go, <laughs> I'm sad, right? I felt like that with stand up in the sense that I didn't like take a break from stand up. I didn't stop doing it by choice. It was stopped entirely and there was not a single option to even do a little bit of stand-up other than Zoom calls. Uh, but let's be real. If I did stand-up over a Zoom, uh, I think that my closing joke would be shooting myself in the brain. Fuck that. I didn't do a single one of those gigs. I'm not that bad. <laughs> I'm not that desperate. You know what I mean? I didn't do a single one of those Zoom gigs because I just was like, why the fuck would I want to do that? That looks horrific you know doing a gig that is live streamed but you're in front of a real audience great love that that's sick doing a stand-up comedy in quotes from your bedroom filmed on a webcam and then broadcast to other cunts laptops who are sitting by themselves in their bedroom who are also about to perform i'm sorry but i would like to say that uh jumping off the uh, uh jumping running through drywall and then plunging off a cliff would be a better time um at least then i would one up elliot <laughs> um so yeah, so what what I mean is like I didn't I don't think I realized at all how much I miss stand up because it wasn't an option for me. It wasn't available to me. I couldn't just go and do it. I wasn't so I kind of just blocked out the possibility of doing it again, which made me just not really miss it, I guess. But dude, as soon as I got booked, it was all I could think about. I was like nervous again. I, had, I hadn't been nervous for years, you know, I've been excited, but I'd only, I think the last time I got properly nervous, nervous was before my comedy special. And then I got a little bit nervous before I opened for Andrew Schultz in Australia. And then before that, I got, actually got very nervous before, before I performed uh, at the New York Comedy Club. Cause I was like, oh fuck, international Will I get passed? Because if you do badly, they go, yeah, thank you for coming, but give it a few months and then try again. I was like, fuck, will I get passed? And if you get passed, you're just in the books as, you know, good comedian. We can have him back whenever uh, we want. Um, so I only ever got nervous for new things, you know, like things I hadn't done before. Comedy special, opening for international act, performing overseas at a club, that kind of stuff. Uh but this, man, I uh, I got nervous. I was nervous like the whole day. I was like, oh, man, am I 
Am I going to go well? Am, do I even know how to do it? What bits am I going to do? I thought about it all day. I worked out. I, I Initially, my plan was to just do old stuff. I'm like, I just want going to do old stuff that I know works, uh, that has gotten a lot of laughs before, just to get my confidence up. I'll get one really good one in the bag, and then I'll try some new stuff at future gigs because the last thing I want to do is come back after 250 days, try something new, and then find out, oh, I'm bad again. <laughs> Fuck, I'm, I'm not good. Right, so we go to the comics lounge. Luke's there with me as well. He's obviously also quite nervous too. Um, we're both fucking excited. Um, and uh, I watch some of the other acts, and I and the the crowd is great. The crowd is awesome, but it's fucking weird because the the comics lounge is like five hundred and fifty seats, but they are only allowed to have one hundred and fifty in. So it's like a, it feels empty, even though there's one hundred and fifty. They're like spaced out. The tables are isolated from each other, uh, which which is the worst thing for comedy. Like if I ever half sold out a venue, you guys will notice. I mean, not many people have noticed because I don't half sell out many venues. But in when I have in regional towns, often you know you can sell a hundred, but they give you a 300 because it's cheap right so I'm like all right uh in that situation if an audience spreads out in a 300 seater and there's only 100 people there it'll kill the show so I will block off all of the seats except for 100 bunch everyone together it's group it's just better for whatever reason it's psychology for whatever fucking reason can't tell you why it's just better at the lounge they're all spread apart but the audience I noticed was trying just as hard as the comedians were because it's a weird thing. I recommend go to the Comics Lounge. You will never see this ever again. The best comedians in the country, unsure, unsteady, a little bit wobbly. Not bad, really good still. Like Husey performed, he killed. But just like, ooh, training wheels still on. Like, oh, just warming up again, getting back into peak form. You'll never see it again, hopefully anyway. It's really interesting to watch. And the audience understood this and were like really nice. They were like, oh, yeah. Totally get comedians going to be rusty. Things are going to be forgotten. Some bits are going to be shit. That's what we want. We've had enough fucking perfect polished material from Netflix like comedy specials. We've seen fucking Dave Chappelle in the best in their best edited, uh, rehearsed, pure form. We've seen uh, like you know clean reality fucking free-to-air TV and gala spots. We want raw. We want fucking in the moment. We want different. And it was awesome. So I noticed that with the comedians, the audience did not want material from the before times. Material that comics knew worked, that was just from their memory. Uh, I know this fucking works. I know this kills. I'm going to do it again. It wasn't going as well as the stuff that was objectively you know, from a written perspective, less good, uh, but from a experience it in the moment, much better because it was more real, right? The audience wanted raw, okay, half-baked ideas. So I immediately, I get there and I scrap my whole set. I see one comedian go up and do just obviously pre-written material. Didn't bomb, but the audience was like, yeah, well, you know, we want to hear about what you think about now, not fucking when you got on a plane 18 months ago or whatever. So I scrapped my whole set and then I just start writing all of the new ideas that I had. I did some I did some uh, tried and true stuff about me being tall uh, because I just have to do that because I get up on stage and people go, what the fuck, and I have to address it. So I did that uh, and then I just did all new, pretty much, all new shit. Uh, and I did so much better than I thought I was going to do. I thought I was going to get off and be like, fuck, that was weird, but at least I'm back at it and I know what I did wrong. I did, like, I didn't destroy, but I did very well. Like, the best, the I, I did the best that I thought I could have gone. I surprised myself. Like, I got on stage and I was thinking that I was going to be nervous. I thought I was going to like, like forget everything. I thought that I was going to mumble or my presence was off. I got on and it came back straight away. I just fucking was in the fucking moment straight away. And I, as soon as I said, hello, uh, I don't know. It was like magic. It was incredible. And I fucking, I just realized in like a millisecond how much I missed this shit. Because it's easy to forget, bro. 250 days of just 
head down, pumping out videos and podcasts, forgetting about stand-up entirely, trying to grow online, trying to maintain, trying to make money to pay off the fucking debt, trying to make sure that I can still employ all of the people that work with me, make sure that they're looked after. Um, and then I fucking get on stage and it, like, literally 250 days of just uh, head down, ass up, was worth it for that moment. It was incredible. There, I, I wasn't perfect, but I watched it, watched it back for the first minute. I was way too fast. I was like, da, 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 da. I didn't give them time to laugh, but then I kind of checked myself and slowed down a little bit and started throwing out punches and then sitting and waiting um, for the audience to laugh and then moving on. Uh, the only time I forgot, I, I did forget some bits and pieces. I for, All of the little tweaks, like, oh, use this word instead of that word and it works better, or pause here, or make this face, or do this gesture, all that, like, fancy garnish on the on top of the done bit stuff is gone. I'm going to have to get all that shit back, all the little touches that you can, all the finishing touches you put on top of a good bit, all gone, um, but the core of performing was still there uh, and there was one bit in my I, in my New York bit I did that was it was the tall bit and then I did a small section of the New York bit um, just to finish off to make sure I finished strong I forgot a massive chunk of it and it, the end of the joke kind of didn't make sense but uh, I kind of brought it back with some crowd work and made it funny so uh, overall man it was it was fucking amazing and uh i am so stoked to be back i cannot wait to get on the road again it uh i think today we just found out sunday capacity limits have been uh lowered again so i think the comics lounge is 150 could potentially be 200 to 300 depending on how the rules apply to them uh so man i just i just cannot wait to do a fucking packed Lewis Spears show. And uh, that shit's coming. I'm already booking it. Um, don't ask me about interstate. I don't know. Melbourne is definitely coming. Regional Victoria, definitely. Uh, dates will be announced next year. But I am fucking stoked. And I hope you guys are too. Interstate, we'll see. Because, you know, it's it financially doesn't make sense especially after having to cancel a whole tour to book a show interstate where I can only sell half the tickets because a lot of the time with the more expensive venues, you know, selling half your tickets, that's when you just start to begin making money. You know, you need to get to 50 to pay off your costs, then the extra half, that's your profit. So for me to go all the way there to maybe make money, we'll see. I'd, I'd rather do like smash Melbourne because the costs are down and then fucking – get my get my gear up, get my fucking wheel spinning again, get back into fighting shape and then take it on the road to those interstate shows when we're allowed to do bigger ones. But it looks like the interstate ones are actually, you know, further ahead than us in terms of restrictions. So that's good. Uh, hopefully next year is going to be awesome. And I, I can't wait to get microchipped by Bill, by Bill Gates with the vaccine and uh, have my DNA modified and, uh, to you know, get, get those 5G waves going and, and really just turn everyone into... Uh, an automaton that serves China. I really cannot wait for that. So that's going to be great. Uh, Elliot Page is going to be the opening act uh, for Brisbane where uh, she, where he, fuck, fuck, where he is going to be uh, just punching on with with just cunts in the front row. It's going to be great. And uh, I can't wait to see who comes out on top, you know, fucking uh, Elliot Page or just, you know, some cunt from row three in Brisbane. It's absolutely going to be row three. It's Brisbane, you know, even me, I'd struggle. <laughs> All right, that brings us to, uh, yes, I missed an episode. Uh, I think I have a valid reason. Uh, I have been fucked with sleep apnea, um, and I've ju I just I just reached a point on that weekend after it was bringing back Luke and Lewis, uh, bringing back the main channel as well, me and Keelan getting everything spinning again, catching up on all of the fucking work that just got left to the wayside over Zoom, uh, all that kind of stuff. But uh, I, ju I just got to Sunday and I was like, you know, I either record a terrible episode or and, and then fuck the whole of this week currently because I'll be to so tired, I have no day off, or I just relax, come back better. Uh, and thank fuck I took it off because I... I didn't know at the time that I was performing at the comics lounge because I got booked the the Wednesday, the Tuesday night that I, Tuesday morning I was booked for Tuesday night. Um, so I, uh, I did a sleep study. I finally got into the hospital. We did it private, which was not 
fucking cheap because I did not have private health insurance. Holy fuck. A sleep study, private health is so <laughs> expensive. Uh, but uh, I've, uh, I'm getting private health now. I've learned my lesson. Uh, I just could never, just could never afford it before. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we never, our, my family never really had it. We, you know, we didn't have very much money, so it was never like a thing that I had. But uh, now I'm like, oh, I understand why you need it, especially if I'm, you know, might be looking at a surgery. So I get my results for the sleep study on the 23rd. So I don't know, but the technician who they're not allowed to tell you the results because they're technicians, they're not doctors, and they don't, I, I guess, know how to properly read it. But she heavily implied there's definitely something going on. So that's good. It was, fuck, it was weird, man. I had to, uh, you go in and it was like a lodge. It was real fancy because it was private, man. It was like, honestly, the fucking sleep study, the, the lodge they gave me, which was out the back of a fucking hospital, the bed, my bedroom, and the amenities were honestly a lot better than a lot of the hotels and Airbnbs that I've stayed up at. And if you think about it, that's a big bad look on the fucking hotels because that's all they have to do. You know, Airbnb, all you got to do is give me a comfortable place to sleep. The hospital, they don't have to do that. They have to save lives and that's all. Save lives, don't kill people. That's all you really got to do. Them having a better fucking bedroom with amenities. I had a television. I watched two episodes of Law and Order. I fucking love that show. Better than some of the Airbnbs I've stayed in, right? Which is ridiculous. But anyway, so you get in and and it's fuck and there's this poor technician, this woman. She was so nice, but fuck her job, right? She starts work at like 8 p.m. and she has to watch cunt sleep until she finishes work at like 6 a.m. Shittest job. I hope it pays well. I imagine it would. Fucking medical at medical rates at uh, like what be double? I, I I imagine probably not. I bet she's getting fucking rorted. Anyway, right? I was uh, I was hoping for a hotel quarantine situation. She was cute, but it didn't happen. Um, <laughs> no, uh, she was real nice. Um, but she hooks me up with these electrodes. I got fucking electrodes all over my head. Got like eight glued to my fucking hair glued to my head. Then I got tubes up my nose. I'm like, oh, that's fucking horrible. And then she puts another set. I knew there was going to be one set. There was two sets of tubes in my fucking nose. She put a finger in my ass. That was unnecessary. Had nothing to do with the thing. (laughs) No, I got shit in my nose. I got electrodes all over my fucking head. Um, I had this like heart rate monitor strapped to my chest, which was then connected to, I had like a, a thing pinching my index finger, which was connected to my chest. I then also had electrodes on my legs and on my toes. She almost couldn't find cords that were like long enough to reach from my leg to the thing on my chest. Um, And then she goes, all right, have a good sleep. And I said, how? (laughs) How am I supposed to have a good sleep? There's a fucking camera, you know, on the bed head looking down at me. Probably I bet half her fun is just looking at the cunts in their bed, scrolling through their phone and just reading what they're doing, like looking at who they're perving at on Instagram, checking out who's cheating on their wife. It'd be great, right? I was looking at some questionable shit and then I turned back, noticed the camera and fucking, you know, put it away. (laughs) I was like, oh, yeah, I'm being filmed. (laughs) Right? So, uh... Anyway, watch my law and order, have my fucking complimentary bickies and tea. And then I had like the worst sleep ever. I woke up halfway through the night and I, I don't know if I, had, if I had a bad sleep because of my sleep apnea or if I had a bad sleep because of all of the shit that was in my fucking nose and the electrodes that, and, and, the, and the glue that was pulling my hair. I don't know what the issue was, but it was, it was an issue. <laughs> um, so look, man. I don't know the results yet, but it it seemed she she made it sound like look she goes look there's definitely something I can't really tell you much but there's definitely something going on. However, I've seen twenty to thirty times worse, and I was like, how the fuck could you be worse than me? I suppose it gets worse with age and if you're overweight. So if you had it as bad as I have it now, and but then you know thirty years later and you're fat, yeah, you would just fucking die. So 
On the 23rd, I get my results. I see the nose and throat guy again. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it's going to be. I hope I get a result um, and I can figure out an ish, figure out a solution because it is, it's, it's like fucking me. It's fucking with me. It's uh it's, it's pretty bad. And uh, I just, I just wake up and I'm so fucking tired. I don't sleep. Like it's not good, um, but I'm fine. I will get through it. It's just been a really, really busy period with the, and you know, it's all, it's all also like COVID, you know, and, and with no stand up, there was like, I was, I got to a point where I was like, fucking, why am I even doing, why am I working this hard? Like there is no payoff in sight. You know, obviously you guys are amazing, but it, you like you in comment, like <laughs> in comment and like the, the comment and like version of you, I struggle to make real because I've got such a stand up background. Like it doesn't feel real. You know what I mean? It's like talking to your friend versus seeing, uh, seeing your friend in real life, talking online versus seeing them in real life. It's completely different. It, it, you know, the, the online version is only, you know, not even really fulfills half the need. Um, so that's how I feel with this. I can't wait to see you guys in person and fucking put on a show and, and hang out with you guys afterwards. I mean, I don't, I don't know about hanging out afterwards with COVID. That'll have to be post-vaccine, I suppose, when we're all automatons. But, you know, we'll all be working in the same factory, you know, fucking shipping out shit for Jeff Bezos anyway at that time. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get to know each other then. Um, all right, I, uh, I'm i going to uh, do some miscellaneous bit at the end. If you uh, don't, if you're new to the podcast, welcome, fuck you. Um, it's the part of the podcast where we answer questions sent in by listeners. If you have a question, if you need some life advice, if you have a funny story to tell me, Send it through to podcast at loosespears.com. Uh, this part of the podcast actually is sponsored by manscaped.com. Manscaped.com, bro, best place to get your fucking razor. Let's be real. I've been raving about it. I used it yesterday. It's amazing. It's fucking awesome. All right. Let me have a look at the code I'm supposed to be using. Yep. Okay, guys. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. Now, uh, a video would have gone up on my channel that has a different code. Those are intentional. Uh, please use code SPEARS. If you listen to the podcast, use code SPEARS. If you mainly watch the main channel, use Loose SPEARS. They're trying to measure the performance of the two. I don't understand why I don't just have one code, but whatever the fuck, Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping the uh, Lawn Mower 3.0. Honestly, I don't know what to tell you about this razor. It's fucking great. Uh, they sent me some new copy. Let's see what I'm supposed to say. December talking points. Ah, here we go. Uh, stocking stuffer copy. Uh, uh, uh. Are you looking for the ultimate stocking stuffers for this holiday season? Look no further because our sponsor, my sponsor, Manscaped, not personalized, is it? Manscaped have the tools to make you win this year's stocking stuffer. That sounds sexual, doesn't it? St I'm going to stock, I'm going to stuff your stocking. I'm going to stock your stuffing or white. This year's stocking stuffer or white elephant competition. The fuck is a white elephant competition? White elephant competition. Sounds like something fucking poachers would play. White. What the fuck is a white elephant? What is a white elephant competition? White elephant gift ex exchange is a popular Christmas event where people vie to walk away with the best president. Oh, Dirty Santa. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That That is a fun game. Anyway, guys, <laughs> that's not what this is about. Manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS. 20% off. Free shipping. Manscaped is the only brand dedicated to below-the-waist grooming and hygiene products. And great news, they just released their products all across Europe, Canada, and Australia. Talking points. Do not read. Host to talk about how you personally enjoy the products. You could talk about how Manscaped has changed the way you care for your balls. If female and enjoy our products, you can mention how you use it on your cunt. They, did. <laughs> they didn't write that. <laughs> they didn't write that. Please use my code because otherwise they'll fucking listen to this and go, why isn't it working? And then they'll go, you know what? Fuck this guy. Use the code speed. You look, okay. It's good. Honestly, I literally used it yesterday. I noticed the other day. 
They mentioned it on Luke and Lewis. I haven't charged the thing for fucking months, actually. I think it's been like two months since I charged it. It still works. I charged it when I got it, and then I use it like, I don't know, every fucking three, four weeks or so when it looks a little bit disheveled. I'll give the old boy a trim, and it, it's great. It does, I haven't hurt myself yet. Uh, it's good. It's better than my old one. My old one is uh, like in the back of the cupboard now. I haven't even touched it. It's great, all right? Uh, a few of their products that are prime stocking stuffers this season are the Crop Preserver, Ball Deodorant. <laughs> Ball, I mean, if you need that, there's, it's there. Good luck to you. The name speaks for itself. The Crop crop Reviver, Ball Toner. What the fuck? A spray-on toner that will give your balls a little... S- <laughs> that will give your balls a little slice of heaven with their aloe vera and hazel extracts. Man... Look, just just buy the fucking shaver before I lose this deal. All right, manscaped.com, use code SPEARS, 20% off and free shipping. For real, the razor is awesome. Just fucking buy it, would you? Stop shaving. Stop trimming. I used to trim my shit with nail scissors when I was a kid. Nail scissors. Do you know how tedious that shit is? And then I, then I tried, like, shaving, shaving. You know how painful that is? Then I tried the beard trimmer... Cut my nutsack. You know how awful that is? Then I spent like 250 fucking dollars at a big shaver space and it did a terrible job. It still cut me. Then Manscaped came along, hasn't cut me. It's cheaper. You get a discount code, free shipping. Fucking use it. Treat your nuts. And ladies, treat those flaps. All right, let's get into miscellaneous bit at the end of the podcast. Where are we? All right. Podcast at loosespears.com. <clears throat> what the fuck? Is this threesome dogging the boys? Okay. This banger. All right. Hey, my name is Josh. I have a dilemma, but I'll skip the part where I suck you off. Why? You've been too busy with the other two dicks in your mouth. Um, basically, my girlfriend is by. And she wants to have a threesome with one of her mates. Obviously, I was down. But that mate has started flirting slash sending nudes and hooking up with him. Didn't have sex yet. So I said I wasn't going to dog the boy. Hang on. My girl's by. I'm trying to work out what type of threesome this is. Is this two dudes? One girl? My girlfriend's bi. Well, that must mean that's a girl. and She wants to have threesome with one of her mates. Obviously, I was down. But that mate has been flirting or sending nudes and hooking up with him. Who is him? Dude, can you cunts fucking read your emails before you send it to me? I assume this means that your girl wants to fuck another girl with you, but that girl who you both want to fuck, has been flirting with one of your friends, male friends, I assume. I said I wasn't going to dog the boys. Cut to a couple of months later, he's made it clear that he is not keen on her, had been hanging out with another girl and posting about her on Instagram. My girl asked me to ask him ask him for permission. I asked, he said, do it. The next day he said he was keen for a root only. Dude. I don't know how people that are this fucking dumb can land this shit. Maybe that's a secret. You want fuck. (laughs) You can't type, dude. How is it that every fucking episode I go off on one of you idiots who can't spell? It's not even spelling. You just are leaving out words. You're just not writing words. You're like, oh, well, fucking... It's like you've written a whole sentence and then you just go through and delete every sixth word just to fuck with me. Can you please read your shit before you send it in? I don't understand how every fucking episode I complain about this shit and then someone goes, oh, I'll send an email in and they don't proofread. I literally yell at one of you guys. I I execute publicly. Uh, one of my re- one of my listeners every single fucking episode, and still everyone lines up to be have their head cut off by me, learning nothing. Fuck. The next day he said he was keen for a route. Okay, so what I'm gathering here 
Your friend was flirting with this girl who you want to do a 3-0 with. Then he starts hooking up with this other girl and moves on. You ask for permission, then he's got FOMO and goes, oh, fuck, I should fuck her. If he's going to, I should. He thought I was going to, so that means I should. The next day he said he was keen for a route only. Would it be dogging the boys to have this threesome or is it just a case of I want her because you do? Yeah, there you go. And I'm all good to go. He is my housemate. So even if it happens, I will make sure that they aren't there. I don't need to rub that in their face. Cheers, cunt. Hope you have a shitter one than a two-year Melbourne lockdown. Cheerio. Yeah, look, Josh, uh, I think that this other guy pr- seemingly clearly only wants to fuck this chick because you've put that back into his head. He had the opportunity, he moved on, and then you were like, oh, are you going to eat that? <laughs> uh, and then he was like, oh, you know, you know what, that is that, that was mine anyway. So, uh, yeah, I think that's what he's doing. I and, and I think he's he's also made it clear that he is only interested in a route. So sounds like you've already had the discussion. I think it's fine. I wouldn't do it in your house. I I honestly, if I think threesomes are a hotel situation, I don't think you want to do it at home. I think that it's too messy at home, especially if he also lives there. I reckon that the the because the the issue because you need to pull off the threesome properly also, right? So I think. Say, you know, you, your girlfriend's friends with this girl, which is also a warning sign, could be good. You need to assess that. It could be like, oh, maybe it's a thing you do once every couple of months. Or it could completely fucking ruin their friendship and then that toxicity will fall on you and affect your relationship with your girlfriend. That could happen. The best way to avoid that is to do it in a hotel, I think. Well, obviously judge whether it's fit to happen or you're just being horny. If it is... Move it to a hotel. Don't do it at home because, you know, if you do it at home, you and the girl, your girlfriend and the girl might be there again under different circumstances. Maybe she has a boyfriend. You're all hanging out. You're all at the place where you bent her over the kitchen bench while your girlfriend watched. It's not good. You don't want that. You don't need that. Also, you don't really need that when you when you and your girlfriend are there alone and then she fucking thinks, oh, the the uh, the fucking couch reminds me of when he wasn't paying enough attention to me. Now I feel sad. I'm going to cry. You you don't want to avoid that. Move it to a different situation where you will never be again. That's why interstate, out of country, best opportunity for a threesome. That's why when girls go to a different country to find themselves, all they find is cock because their reputation and their memories will not follow them back. You know what I mean? So that is the best way. To do it. Girls already quarantine their reputation and their uh, situational memory when they go to fucking be whores in other countries, right? So do that for your girlfriend. Put it in a hotel. That's my advice to you. Uh, And uh, if you do fuck this girl, don't make a big deal out of it to your mate. I wouldn't even, I don't know if I would even tell him unless it comes up. Just go, yeah, it happened. Yeah, it was good. Don't fucking brag on about it. And don't do that in general because you don't want – because it's your friend group, right? So if you talk about it, everyone will know. That's just how it works. All right, that's my advice. Jeez, what good threesome advice for a man who's never had one. I almost, almost have. Uh, And you've heard that story a million times. All right. Uh, guys, I'm going to end it there. That is all we have time for. I'm going to continue on, uh, for the Patreon podcast. Uh, if you would like, uh, exclusive episodes of the, uh, Spear Sundays podcast, they go for an extra half an hour. It's not too much extra time, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of stuff that I can't really talk about publicly. It's more insider stuff. It's an update on where I'm going, what I'm working on. And it's all of the, you know, really, really risky shit that maybe I would only ever stay on stage otherwise, because I don't need it floating around there. Lots of blackface, lots of N word, you know the deal. Uh, no, it's absolutely none of that. That is the worst pitch I could have given guys. Look, if you want to support me and what I do, if you want to help this, all this shit keep spinning, 
Uh, and uh, you want extra speed Sundays once a week, access to the Discord, uh, free tickets, discount merch. Check out my Patreon. It's all there. I would really appreciate it, and it'll help uh, me get through until we can get these shows going, which won't happen until probably about March or April. So thank you very much, uh, and uh, I will talk to you next Sunday. I will do my very, very best uh, not to miss another episode, uh, it, but uh, sometimes it's just going to happen, especially with the uh, health shit I'm dealing with. So thank you for listening. Luke and Lewis will be out in a couple of days. Highly recommend you check it out. It is the best the show has ever been. Um, and there's no chance of me missing an episode because everyone rocks up at my fucking house. So thank you. I will uh, see you next Sunday. Uh, I've got a bunch of videos coming out also. Until then, I hope you have a fucking shit one. Patreon, manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS. 20% off. Free shipping. Shave your pussy. <laughs>